we live? Oh no. Oh. Here we go. Hello, my name is Andreas. I'm an electrical and controls engineer. I'd like to share with you what that means in the world of automation and what my daily responsibilities are. I work for a company called IW Hartness right here in Greenville, South Carolina. My company builds automated machines for the packaging industry. Okay, not quite like that. Nothing would be possible without electrical circuits, sensors, motors, and a computer to breathe life into these machines. There are two aspects to my job, electrical design and controls engineering. What are my job responsibilities as a designer? After understanding the machine's functions, I select parts and components to create an electrical cabinet and I prepare schematics. Both the parts and the schematics to instruct electricians how to wire the parts need to meet strict rules as defined by the National Electric Code and NFPA 79. To spare you the sleep-inducing specifics, let me just show you what not following them could mean. Watch this. This is the kind of mistake that we need to avoid making. Our machine designs need to follow these codes to ensure that the machines are safe for the people around them and the people who are operating our machines. In order to create schematics, we use computer-aided design software. We draw blocks to represent components, squares and circuits to represent connection points, and lines to present wires. We also use symbols to represent devices such as push buttons and sensors. The schematics are done, the parts have arrived, now we take all of those and hand them over to the electrician for assembly. The electrician takes those parts and builds them into a panel. On most of our machines, there is also an operator console to interact with the machine. This is actually a good transition into my other job, controls engineering. How will the operator start the machine? How will the motors run? For how long will the motors run? Based on the electrical design and the assigned inputs to the computer, the controls engineer writes a program to take the inputs from the sensors and the push buttons and turn outputs on and off based on the electrical design. Inputs could be the start and stop push buttons as well as sensors that detect product in the machine. The program determines which outputs to turn on for the motors to run. The computer program is not the only programming I'm responsible for. If we take another look at the operator console, there's also a computer monitor. Well, that device is not just a monitor to show information. It is also an input device. It's a touchscreen. It is similar to a tablet. It can show you messages, it can show you numbers, and it can show you graphics. There can be buttons placed on the screen for the operator to press and act as another input type to the computer. From this touchscreen, many specific screens can be called on that show information from a specific program running on the computer. In a way, these small programs running on the computer and these specific screens are similar to apps on your tablets or smartphones. But what does all this accomplish? My work makes it possible for things to move inside the machine, which ultimately means that product moves. There are many designers and programmers at my company and together we support a variety of machines from conveyors to carton packers to shrink packers and robots. Oh yeah! We use robots too. Well, perhaps not that type of robot, but the ones that we use are certainly very similar in looks.
My name is Andreas. I'm an electrical and controls engineer. I love my job. It is so much fun to create designs, write programs, and to design touchscreen interactive devices. I hope you'll consider this exciting career field where the technology is always changing and there's always a new gadget for you to learn, study, and perhaps even incorporate in your new designs. Thanks everyone. Thank you.